Inspector summary video. We're here in Springfield, Illinois, and this Farscape uh, building is around 1925. Uh, this Farscape is 75 plus years old. All original hardware. What we're finding here is all these bolts are original square heads. A lot of rust build up on this Farscape. And as you can see, all this needs to be cleaned out. And 100% of all the treads and some of the rails have all been cleaned, uh, rebolted but none of the treads were cleaned of rust so every one of these treads needs to be rebolted again all the rust needs to be removed and then the treads return to their position after the area has been cleaned so the law is very simple it requires the following uh, load test a fire escape if it's in pristine condition and that load test is basically putting a load on these platforms a load on these treads and a load on that other platform and you repeat the process all the way down it's 100 pounds per square foot, so that's a platform over there of uh, 4 by 3 So you would put 1,200 pounds on that platform for a period of 30 minutes and take measurements. Uh, you would do that to this platform and so on and so forth. You take about 1,000 pounds on these treads and you load test for that for 30 minutes. So that's the only way to guarantee that all these old bolts, if this fire escape was in a pristine condition, that's the only way I can guarantee that this square head bolt is going to pass an inspection. It's called a load test, a live load test. The alternative to a live load test of the 100% of the fire escape is to change all the bolts on certain components such as the staircases like they did here but they did it wrong. But let's say this was a clean repair and there was no rust in the connections and, the, and it was repolted. Now I only have to do that platform, this platform. So it's load test the, the, everything that's old, but anything that's been refurbished, do not load test it because you have all brand new bolts and it's been cleaned as to the uh, industry standard. The final way to avoid a load test is 100% of all the connections that are old, 50, 75, 100 years old. So every one of these square head bolts is going to be switched out now to a new bolt. The area is going to be cleaned and rebolted and sealed with silicone. So once you start cleaning up every old bolt, every clip, every connection gets the bolt popped out, the rivets popped out, and then you rebolt it on all the major connections, not all the minor connections, all the major platform structures, supports, all the treads, all the posting on the rails. Once you change out every single bolt, it's, a, it's called a refurbishment, then uh, there's no need for a load test. And on average, the load test criteria for a refurbished fire escape is on average is every 25 years the load test question will be will be uh, brought up. All right, so let's go down slowly. We're gonna see some of the issues. Russ is building up on all these clips. Okay, gotta be changed out. See how the guy changed the bolts, but he didn't change the rust behind it? These treads, look at all the rust inside. Look at all the rust inside. There's better ones coming down that show all the rust. Look at all the rust stayed in there. They changed the bolts, new stainless steels, but they left. They left all the rust inside, so every one of these is compromised um, and has to be cleaned. Take the tread out, put, clean that area, prime the area, put it back, silicone shut it with new bolts. Um, let's talk about everything back into the building. These are all uh, from either through rust jacking or ice jacking, all the connections back into the building. I strongly recommend here that we put an angle that ties these three bars back together and then use an angle to basically tie these back in. This is uh, all needs to be clean and then sealed so water doesn't get back in there and all the bolts obviously of all the post and corner posting. I'm a little concerned about these these corners because they're old so we have to determine whether or not we want to put a cross brace here and put a bolt uh, because a lot of times these things are rotted out and these things are tubular so there's going to have to be some testing on that uh, to make sure. Let's go down we're going to see just what occurs on the cement side that needs to be done but I need to go down one. Or maybe here water has been getting into this building all this gets to get repacked all that underneath there I need a new epoxy bolt either verify that connection by drilling it out or having a mason to open up that whole area or five inches away put an epoxy bolt and basically nullify the need for me to verify that connection either through low testing 
I can duplicate a connection and now I don't need to load test. I can also unify the, uh, the connections by running a piece of angle, 3x3. Three three. Underneath here and extending about 5 to 8 inches, ex extending 5 to 8 inches out that way. And basically on here I'm going to fit about 3 to 4 epoxy bolts. And where they touch underneath, you, make, you mechanically fasten that. So now I've basically eliminated the need to verify the connections. You still have to repack 100% of all the cement. But now that you've, nu you've nullified the need for a low test through what's uh, called duplication. Again, re-cementing. Again, this is great. Look, the, the, the bolt is still, the head is there, but there's no shaft. Uh, this is typical. Um, here's, here's a typical, there's the nut and the bolt. There's the head right there, nothing in between. So just stand there, she years old. She's 75 plus years old. Every one of these major connections need to be rebolted. Every one of the minor connections, if they're in good condition, they can stay minor connections only. Again, 100% of all the treads need to be rebolted, taken out, cleaned, put back. Good opportunity to dip these uh, treads. Um, got a lot of water damage getting into this building. And these dragon tears, these rusty tears coming down is an indication that water keeps getting in there year after year. Duplicate all the connections or verify every connection into the building. Duplication is going to be much cheaper. Epoxy bolts, by the way, the epoxy bolts that are going to be up there can only happen in the spring, probably April, May, June. They need a good weather, uh, night and day, 60 to 80 degrees, consistent. Um, here's one of the staircases that's, uh, and they re reinforced it here. Instead of changing out this clip, this is what's happening with the clip. This clip is gone now, and it ate already my angle up here. My clip got eaten. And that's what the clip looks like. It's a wraparound. It's a piece of angle, and then they heat it and wrapped. It's called a shoe. This is what happens when you let the shoe rot, rot, rot. It just eats both sides, and then it finally falls away. They have a temporary Band-Aid here for it. All right, let's go down. A little bulge, a bulge in the gratings. Now it just starts repeating itself all the way down. Cement situations. Cement. Cement. Tiebacks, gratings, just all original hardware on this Farscape. 100% refurbishment of every connection. That's a major connection. All minor connections, there's only going to be a few on this, but most likely it's going to be a 100% refurbishment of all connections. And I'll talk to you about what that means in a second. As far as on the support, a lot of these were wedged with wood, and it was that wood that started doing a lot of the spalling that basically pushed everything out. After a while, that wood... When you pack it with cement on the other on the outside, it looks great for a few years and then it just pops and that wood stays wet year after year. This fire escape uh, is presumed to have lead. It's older than 1978, so EPA rules apply. He must be a licensed renovator. Look at this. Look how much rust is eating this, eating the shoe, eating the clip, and it's going to do what the one up there. This is eventually going to eat through here and pop. Look how much rust is there. So every one of these shoes needs to be... You got to come in here and cut all these rivets out and then either make a new shoe or um, use the existing shoe if it still has enough material left on it. Got a silicone shut after you clean 100% of the treads. Um, let me show you a couple things here. And again, everybody's going to come out on these. So um, these gratings are all half-inch bar, standard, but on these supports, the next thing that's needed on here is this connection right here see this connection right here that's a single bolt the support is basically part of the triangle arm and that bolt is 75 years old we're either going to change these all out or if they're in good texting condition which this one seems i need a gusset plate put in here and that gusset plate is going to pick up two bolts here and going to pick up two bolts here and basically we've reinforced that connection as soon as we do that Plus the tiebacks into the building with the uh, epoxy bolts. The healthy epoxy bolts back into the building. We basically nullify the need for this connection uh, to be load tested. Because we refurbished the entire structure and the tieback in, which is an unknown, gets nullified by us doing an epoxy connection back into the building. All right, let's continue going down. After a while, this repeats itself and over and over again, and I'm going to probably end it here and pick it up 
down there because you do go to a platform down below. That platform is only about uh, four to six inches off the grade. We probably need to elevate that to 12 inches off grade. And because as it sits in the snow year after year, it's rotting out that whole entire catwalk system that goes to that gate. So I'm gonna pick up my inspection from down there. And repeating, 100% of the treads need rebolting. 100% of the platforms need rebolting. 100% of the supports need rebolting. 100% of the supports need to be re-hilted back into the building to nullify the need to verify these connections back into the wall or view uh, through a load test is the only way I can verify these. And the, the thing about a load test is that it's done every five years. So you have to load test it today and five years from today I need a load test again. But as soon as you epoxy it back into the building, the average cycle, again, uh, and this is based with the uh, fire official, the average cycle is 25 years if the engineer performs some pull tests on some of these uh, bolts that are sticking out of the building to verify that everything is good. So we're gonna end it here. It just repeats itself over and over and over again. And I'll pick it up from that part that goes into the parking lot. Down. Firescape Engineers Inspector Summary Video. Here we are now on part two of this Firescape in uh, Springfield, Illinois. And what we have is a Firescape that goes down. Very unique situation here and that is that there's a cantilever halfway through this fire escape. We're about four floors up. And this cantilever, which is now in a down position, it's frozen in a down position, was actually one of the ways that you uh, keep from breaking into the building. So we probably are gonna get this, this cantilever back into action, put a release arm on it so that it only opens up from above. Um, and that way it will stop any building break-ins from happening uh, into this part of the building here. Okay, so this is the uh, structure that we have, probably about 12 stories. And now let's take a look. Same situation that happened on that fire escape. Up above is happening here, though all the bolts on the fire escape have been uh, rebolted. But again, they never removed any of the rust. So every single one of these has to come out. Uh, we have the cantilever here. The cantilever needs to be re, uh, reassessed. You gotta re rebalance. You got rust growing in the connection. So we gotta be careful because see the bolts that are holding this weight and this weight is gonna fall down. So this area, this does need to be dealt with and secure so that it doesn't pop and hit the ground. See all the rust? So all this is going to be done. You got a cement situation. Every single one of these needs to be re-cemented. Anything beyond four inches square, six inches square of my connection is a mason's situation. It's a mason repair. As you can see, some splitting of the platforms, cement issues again. This used to go up, so this thing, this is the pivot. So as you can see, there's the pivot, it needs to be repacked. So if we want to, we can make this thing so that nobody breaks into the building. There is a parking lot down here that they've been using, uh, it belongs to the bank. And this parking lot has been a source of people breaking into the building. So uh, again, all the rebolting, 100% of the treads, 100% of the connections have to be rebolted. Okay, changed. See all the connections back into the building. Just pack it, and then uh, we're gonna put new epoxy bolts. As you can see, we're gonna go down to the cantilever. There's a lost cantilever to the ground. These pulleys and the cable is original, so we need to get those all swat swapped out and put a release arm up here so that uh, nobody can break in and pull this thing down. So, but we do have a lot of rust on the pivots, so, um, but this thing, if you were to step out and step it down, it's, ru it's rubbing up against the wall right there. And that uh, cable needs to be swapped out, new pulley systems, those are no good, those are all 75 plus years old, there's a weight inside that box. So there's probably gonna be a release arm somewhere here. And when you do the release arm this way or this way, that release arm will let this drop two to three feet per second, hit the ground, but right now it's currently scraping against the wall over there. I walked all the way out on it and it didn't go down. Uh, so we have somebody that said they walked all the way out on it, it didn't go down, so it's currently frozen. Uh, and if that's the case, as I go out now and test it, this is going to be one of the issues. So I'm... I set off the alarm. <laughs> It won't go down, so it's in a life safety issue. Okay. It's an alarm, so people don't.
both break into the building. Got away from the alarm. These guys gonna go and shut it off. Again, all original hardware must be load tested or must be refurbished to avoid the load test. One or the other. So spot repairs can be done and load test the difference based on the fact that everything's old or refurbish everything and get this into a 25 year cycle that low testing is not required during that time. Yes. 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 Some reason I thought you were the guard there. Oh, the building. I'll be down in a minute. Yeah, if you can, you can. He'll he'll let you in. Can can you go let him in? He's gonna meet you. That was the uh, inspector for the city in Springfield. So that's it on this. Uh, we got to get we got to get this uh, secured. That that piece at the bottom because you can't it won't come down. That is a life safety issue. This entire platform needs to be raised at least to the level of this, so that in the snow it's kind of low, and because it has so much snow on top of it. It is rotting beyond, beyond belief. So I recommend that this get elevated and just before you get to the gate area, it drops down to accommodate the stepping. But as soon as you raise this about 12 inches off grade, when the snows come, this thing won't rot, won't blow into the building. Um, and then wherever it gets near doors, it does a step down. Um, also, we, get, we highly recommend that the building get the roof done and this uh, catwalk is going to be able to be taken apart anyway, but this roof should be a rubber roof prior to this portion of the fire escape getting put on so that way uh, it'll carry this area for the next 50 to 75 years. Any questions? Firescape Inspector uh, Manessis here, 800-649-3333.
Uh, right now, firefighters are taking down the ladders and rolling up the hoses. But earlier in the night when they pulled up, there were flames coming out of the side of the building. Firefighters say it was one of the scarier moments because when you pull up to a building and you see children and mothers hanging off the side of the fire escape, smoke swirling around them, they said that's scary, scary stuff. They got up there, they got the ladders up, and they said nobody got hurt. The uh, fire escape, there was uh, three or four people hanging off the fire escape. They couldn't get off. They were just on the fire escapes. I had people hanging in the fire escapes at the rear of the building, and on this side of the building, they, we had a bunch of people on that fire escape. About 50 people were displaced inside this building. However, firefighters say there's good news tonight. It looks like everybody will be allowed to go back in, except the one unit where the fire was in. They said that's good luck to them tonight. I'm Bob Wilson on the scene of Bridgeport, News 8. Now go slowly up when you before you don't go too fast up because she's gonna want to come up. So go ahead. She's gonna. I, want, I just want to see where the counterbalance is at. Okay, right about there. Very good. As you can see, it's kind of violent. Don't be scared. <laughs> You're not going to pass the ground in case you fall. All right, let's start the process all over again. So if this was an evacuation... You have to be ginger a little bit, I'm sure. Be safe. Go ahead. And now you have no emergency going on, but you're about a third of the way there. You can make it come down as fast as you want. Don't worry about it. This is just, I just want to pretend it's an, it's a, it's a, you know, there's an emergency. Because usually during a fire, you're not going to have that much time. I'm, I, if I was behind you, I'd be kicking your butt right now saying, dude, what are you waiting for? They wouldn't want to this. Good. It hit the ground. Very good. All right, so now do me a favor. And you're going to step off of it for a second, and I want you to see how quickly it goes back up. I catch it so it doesn't go far. Let it go and uh, grab the grip. All right, so now bring it down. And what just, doing? we're doing a fire escape inspection. Oh. All right, so now you're going to just hold it in uh, position, but just put your foot on it. This is just to indicate what a fireman would have to do in case there's a fire. Somebody would have to sit here and physically hold the thing. So if you can hold it down here for a second, I'm just going to do a quick run up. The smoke, the flames, and the frightened faces. All in a firefighter's line of duty. But Chief William Hitchcock remembers the night it wasn't the fire that almost stopped him. Oh, I was scared to death. <laughs> but the fire escape that broke underneath him. Where well, the railing just came away from the building. And our investigation found across Massachusetts, more unsafe fire escapes. Rusty, deteriorating, crumbling, broken. And what state officials didn't know, the system they set up to keep fire escapes safe is also falling apart. The potential ramifications are disastrous. So let's look at this one. This expert iron worker is licensed to build, maintain, and inspect fire escapes. So then over here? For months, we examined dozens of them with alarming results. Looking at this today, would this pass inspection? No. In dormitories, at theaters, at homes, and apartment buildings. Rust is actually eating away the metal of the Correct. fire escape. Correct. And the bottom line? It'll get weak and then eventually it'll fall. This one has rotted connections. This one missing bolts, twisted metal. Would the stairs come down? No, never come down. This one, a broken tread. So how dangerous is it for the people inside this building? This fire escape is definitely going to put somebody either in the hospital or it's going to put somebody at a, in a cemetery. Fire escapes are so critical. The state building code requires they be certified for structural adequacy and safety every five years. But our investigation found that safeguard is simply being ignored. Here's proof. We chose fire escapes at random in Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Worcester, and here in Quincy. We checked building department files. But there's no fire escape certification. Not in this file. To see if building owners had submitted their mandatory inspection reports. But there's no certification in this one either. Right. Bottom line, not one we checked in Quincy had been certified as safe. And the director of inspectional services admitted because of staffing shortages, the city has no idea how many other fire escape owners are breaking the rules. And as a result, do you know how many fire escapes in your city are safe? Or not? Well, 
I don't know. In Worcester, not one we checked was certified. In Somerville. No. Nope. Four more fire escapes. Did it fall through the cracks? Yeah. Not one up-to-date certification. And again, no system for keeping track. I, How can they get away with that? Be, I guess that the shortest answer of all is because we don't have the resources to sit here and follow up on these things. If structural deficiencies are reported, local building inspectors can actually evacuate residents until repairs are made. Would you talk to us on camera about this? No. But when we surveyed two dozen more communities, most admitted they had no idea how many fire escapes were certified. In Taunton, inspectors told us they haven't seen a certification in 25 years. Northampton officials said it's a cold day in hell when that happens. In Cambridge, too, not one of our test buildings was certified, and the official in charge would not come out to discuss it. In Boston, where there are more than 8,000 fire escapes, again, according to inspectional services, not one we checked was certified. Officials know they are required to enforce the building code, but they admit they don't always know if owners are breaking the law. The building code is being ignored. Right, but it's difficult to write a violation when you don't have knowledge of something like that. But state officials say for a critical issue like this, communities should know. And they warn the Massachusetts building code is not optional. Does it worry you that these fire escapes are not being certified? This is an important issue and should not be ignored. That's because after the smoke and flames begin, it'll be too late to learn you've got no way out. I can't stress it enough, Hank, that these things have to be maintained and, and someone's got to be watching. As a result of our investigation, state officials will now issue an alert to local inspectors. Meanwhile, if there's a fire escape on your home or office, you can contact your local building department to make sure it's properly certified. In the newsroom, I'm Hank Phillippe Ryan. Welcome to Firescape Services. We provide inspections and certifications, repairs and load tests to remove violations in your area and nationwide. So whether you're an inspector or whether you're somebody, you know, you have your own home, you have your own building, the first thing is the law is very clear. It must be structurally sound and must be kept painted. So is the Firescape painted or is it or is it not painted? And does it have more paint than rust or more rust than paint? So I'm, I can just look at this fire escape and say that I have evidence right now that there's more rust than paint on this fire escape. So immediately, if you were to call a, an inspector out here, the law doesn't allow him to pass this fire escape simply because it has more rust than paint. And structural means that if the fire escape is 50 to 75 years old, when any inspector is looking at it, he's got to see some evidence of maintenance. And maintenance means that I have to see a change in bolts, I have to see a change in, in rivets, I have, to I have to see some new hardware. Because when I go up to a fire escape, I see nothing but original hardware. That hardware is 50 to 75 years old. It's been out in the weather 50 to 75 years. And it's just impossible for not one of those rivets, one of those bolts to be changed in 50 to 75 years. And whenever that occurs, what I have is a fire escape that somebody's been constantly painting, but they've never done anything structurally to it. So now that makes the entire fire escape pretty much suspect. So now I have to be careful as to what I'm looking at to make sure that the structural now on especially the major structural connections are in good order. Thank you for watching our video. Please call us today at 800-649-3333 to discuss your fire escape issue with a live inspector or schedule an inspection in your area today.